Okay, we're up to session two, and that brings us uh, to the Blue Economy Research Foundations. Um, this is a sample um, of the Sustainable Seas uh, Blue Economy Research, uh, which is either completed or nearing, nearing completion. Um, our first uh, two speakers uh, that we have up uh, are talking about indigenising the blue economy. We've heard about indigenising this morning, fostering new opportunities, institutions and business. Uh, we have uh, John Reid from the University of, of Canterbury. John uh, is of Ngāti Pikiao Tainui descent and is a senior uh, research fellow at the University of Canterbury's Ngaitahu Research Centre. He is a specialist in leading and developing multidisciplinary multi research and development programs focused on addressing interrelated social, economic and environmental problems. John's current research uh, interests are focused on sustainable development uh, within Indigenous tribal communities and in fostering novel approaches to development through engagement between Indigenous and Western ways of knowing. Our second uh, co-presenter is Jason Meeker. Great to see you, uh, Jason. Uh, uh, he's of Tūhoi, uh, Ngāti Awapakatohi and Ngāti Kahunganu descent. He is an Associate Professor at Te Raupapa Waikato Management School and Te Kotai Tanga Research Institute, University of Waikato. Jason's research is centred on Indigenous business philosophy in multiple sites, sectors and scales, including Indigenous trade, tourism, agribusiness and the marine economy. Indigenising the blue economy. Let's give a big round of applause for these two gentlemen. Kia <laughs> down to 14 minutes already. Uh, you know, it's just our pleasure, our pleasure to be here uh, representing our um, our little uh, project team. It's called Project 2.3. I tried to drop, uh, pro, you know, 2.3, but uh, no, no. Uh, you know, we need numbers. Numbers are good, so it's 2.3. That's who we are. Uh, but we're more than that, I think. And so, um, oh, there's some buttons here. Okay. Green looks, looks good. Green. Okay, uh, now uh, our project is indigenizing the blue economy and John and I are gonna run through a little bit about what we've found uh, through this project. Uh, and it's important for us to sort of say, well, it's not just John and me, there's a whānau of, uh, of us involved in this research. The most important thing about our, our team here is partnering with iwi and Māori and Moriori uh, to really uh, allow their mātauranga, their knowledge, their voices, and their perspectives, their history, their aspirations to be heard through this research. So they are the mātauranga experts, and we are fortunate enough to be working with them as partners, as uh, researchers, uh, listening to their, uh, their kōrero and, and uh, supporting their aspirations. So that's a little bit about our team there. And then I'm going to hand over to my good friend, Dr. John, to take us. Um, so we, we did quite a lot of background before beginning this project um, where we engaged uh, heavily with a whole lot of Māori leadership in the economic area and uh, also with communities. And we came up with three um, core themes which we are investigating throughout the program. Um, that's uh, pāhekoheko, or increasing integration, ahua tanga, uh, generating differentiation, and whakatautika, um, generating balance. And so these three areas all kind of integrate or, or fit together. Um, just to give you a very brief outline of what each area is, so what we were finding out there was that um, a lot of uh, marae-based communities, iwi, hapu, 
were all seeking a ways in their marine estates where they could integrate the planning um, of what was occurring in their marine territories to have um, detailed economic planning, long-term economic planning, and a real interest in that. There was also an, a, a real interest in how they could improve the efficiencies of asset distributions and how could different iwi work together to manage their quota and integrate their quota management to get better um, outcomes, economic outcomes. The next one was differentiation. So how can you get more for your products through indigenous branding? Um, how could you look at alternative ways of operating the marine estate? How might Māori invest in infrastructure? Um, how might they uh, go into further into aquaculture or to marine tourism and other areas, and also branding. The last one was how do we, a lot of the assets are consolidated with iwi. Um, how do you get um, these consolidated assets to generate jobs, in, um, incomes, community development down at marae scale or out in coastal communities? So these are the kind of the three themes that were popping out most strongly throughout the work. Um, these are the five case studies that we've been working um, with, so we're exploring those themes with these case studies to kind of ground our research um, directly. So I'll just hand it over to, to Jason to cover the first case study. Far out, we're racing through this. <laughs> um, now, the, the critical thing with our research is, um, so we had those three themes, right? Uh, now, we, what we wanted to uh, sort of understand is, how do those three themes play out for Māori marine-based enterprises of different scales and different locations with different types of activities and aspirations? So we needed to partner with Māori organisations to do that. So we looked at, uh, so we're going to talk briefly about those five case study organisations. We've got Iwi Collective Partnership, who's, who's here all, already, uh, Maru, uh, and then Moana New Zealand. So we're all part of that. Uh, Akaroa Salmon. I'm going to talk briefly about that. Ngāti Mutunau Whare Kauri uh, and the Moriori uh, people of also Re uh, So we had two case studies on the, on the Chathams as part of our, uh, of our research. The first one, now ICP, Iwi Collective Partnership. Now that is uh, an example of a collaborative effort uh, with Iwi to consolidate their, um, their annual catch entitlement basically to uh, sort of achieve economies of scale, but also to ensure that they get the best deal for their resource and their assets, and working together as iwi. Now that, um, and I was fortunate to be part of the, uh, the f sort of founding of that group uh, when I was working with our, one of my iwi, Tuhoi, uh, and, and Maru was, uh, was there too. So very pleased to sort of see the growth and development of uh, iwi collective partnership there. Uh, one of the uh, key aspects of, um, of the Iwi Collective Partnership, they're exploring uh, with Irene and, and others, uh, you know, the idea of what does tikanga Māori, mātauranga Māori look like in the business of fishing? How does tikanga inform the practice, you know, the process of uh, catching, harvesting, processing, marketing our kaimuana? What are those tikanga? And how do we ensure that those tikanga are shared, are protected, and enhance what it is we do, and in particular these 19 iwi and their aspirations as a collective? How do they do that? And they're working together with a whole range of other uh, iwi and Māori uh, fishing organisations to be able to do that. So that is really the focus of our, our case study with uh, the iwi collective partnership there. Uh, and, you know... Essentially, um, and we had a kōrero with them at, um, in, in Tauranga uh, and heard a little bit about the, the kōrero and you'll get to hear more about that uh, during the conference. Uh, and, the, you know, there's some key issues there in terms of mā tauranga and tikanga, in terms of uh, what tikanga we can share and how we share that, but also how do we protect that knowledge as well and how do we ensure that that is part of the commercial development of these, uh, these entities. And so we'll hear more from uh, Maru uh, and, and the team from ICP as well through the conference. Uh, yeah, so the, the next case study was Akaroa Salmon. And so this was uh, recently purchased, uh, it's a, a salmon fishery in Akaroa Harbour. It was recently purchased by Onoku Runanga with Ngati Parau. And um, 
So what they were interested in doing was how do we increase value from, from our product? Um, how might we be able to get more for our product in overseas markets, given they can't keep expanding because of environmental limits um, of, for fish you know, marine farming within Akaroa Harbour? And so what we did was we did some market analysis in conjunction with them, and uh, we were looking at what markets uh, they're currently really concentrated in selling into the United States. We then found a range of markets around the world um, where, um, that were, um, uh, where there was growing demand and a way where they could um, spread, their, their, uh, spread their, um, their interests and lessen their, their, tra their risk in terms of changes that might happen around trade um, restrictions. Um, once again, another graph here. I won't go into detail, but basically, the further right you get on the graph, the more saturated the market, um, the less growth there is in the market. But further on the left, the red, the red um, bubbles is where the market's growing. And this is particularly for markets that have an interest in uh, products with high, good environmental credentials, but also an excellent indigenous story associated with them. And so, what generally, I won't go through all the results, but generally, what we found was that. Um, the core thing was was that there is a there is a strong demand for a, you know really good indigenous storytelling behind the product, but it needs to be backed with country of origin labelling and with um, e um, good um, what you might call eco labelling or verification of environmental footprint. So those three things kind of went together, and so through that we kind of kind of give them some good recommendations about where they should target um, their future sales, but also and their their uh, trade relationships, but also where they could, um, uh, uh, the type of story they should wrap around their product and the type of initiatives they should um, follow. Uh, the two other case studies uh, that we're going to talk about are based in the Chathams. Uh, we were very blessed to have uh, been invited to, to go out to the Chathams and uh, our research team said basically when they went when they went over there, so Anne Marie, Corey, and and uh, Fiona Widemu from our team went over to uh, the Chathams, um, and uh, you know this you've basically got to be there uh, to know what it feels like and what the pressures are, what the challenges are, but also what the opportunities are, and the resources, uh, what's there. So that was a, a really important aspect for us. So, in terms of the Moriori case, you know we're really wanting to understand from. Uh, the Moriori point of view and world view, uh, what are their challenges, what are their aspirations in terms of how they govern uh, their resources, their marine resources in that environment. Uh, and they're looking at awahatana and paahekoheko, so differentiation in terms of creating value from what it is that they, the resources that they do have, but also uh, paahekoheko in terms of integration of the resources there, because there's sort of multiple interests there on the islands. And uh, what, what was the approach? Well, kōrero, you know, got to go over there and kōrero with the people uh, and hear their voices and their stories and their perspectives. Uh, and their reo, you know, he te reo. And then, um, you know, looking at some documents and, and, and uh, all of that sort of stuff. So, I mean, it's really important for us to understand the history of the people there uh, and how they came to be and their assets and their, their resources. So a real priority for them is to ensure that those, the voices of the kaumātua, the people who are living on the island, are part of the aspirations for, that they have for their uh, marine, marine estate. Uh, the, the other case study is uh, Ngāti Mutunga o Whare uh, who also live on the, the, the Chathams. And for them, um, you know, one of the key things is in terms of similar methodology, talking with the people, allowing their voices to be heard, their tikanga, their history uh, to inform that research. And again, you know, going over to the island and being part of uh, the experience there. So one of the key challenges for Ngāti Mutin or Whare Kauri is uh, basically like a stock take, just understanding the nature of the marine resources that they have, the marine reserves that are there, uh, and what uh, what condition they're in, and what state they're in, and what their potential is uh, as well, and uh, you know those are some of the sort of priorities that they have, and working in with uh, the quota management system, the way it sort of operates on the island. One of the key things that they've found is that a lot of the the quota that's actually fished on the Chathams is owned elsewhere, in Aotearoa, 
you know. So uh, the benefits uh, that, that flow from the, the fishing activity there flows somewhere else. It's sort of like foreign ownership, foreign investment, you know, uh, from Aotearoa in the Chathams. Uh, so that is a, sort of a bit of a challenge for uh, the whānau there on, on the Chathams. Uh, but there are also other economic challenges. Cost of living is massive over there. Uh, housing uh, and fuel, energy, infrastructure, all of that needs, um, needs further development and, and support in order to uh, grow and develop their activities. Uh, the last case study is, uh, is with Moana, New Zealand. Uh, and, you know, we're, we're all part of this, uh, this, this big organisation and, and company, but one of the things that they are interested in, and we were also interested in, is understanding the relationship between iwi and whānau scale enterprise. So how does a, an organisation, a company as big as Moana, support whānau-based enterprise? And one of them, an example of that is uh, Roger Rawlinson and his whānau, an inshore fisher. Uh, so his whānau's relationship with Moana is enabling their whānau to, um, you know, to uh, finance the operation and uh, the purchase and operation of a, of a fully specced vessel, you know, for them to be able to sort of engage in that activity. So that is uh, a, a key focus of the, uh, that case study in terms of the whānau and iwi scale relationship there in terms of whakatautika. And... Uh, with 50 seconds to spare, I think um, that's kind of that's kind of it. So, kia ora tātou. <laughs>